Goodness me, this story should shock you. Contracts worth 381 million rand, all to one man and his relative in just three years. Oh, and he was likely able to throw a big name around. His uncle, by marriage, is the president of the Republic, Cyril Ramaphosa. Now, whether or not the president knew about this, Gauteng hospitals have been dishing out lucrative contracts, some of which were flagged by the slain whistleblower Babita Diokoran before she was gunned down. So since April 2019, one man, Sangwani uh, Maumela, now dubbed the Don of Tembisa. He was probably going around saying he is the new Kulubuse. Jack Bloom is the DA's shadow MEC for Health in Gauteng and asked his opposite number about those contracts and got the shocking reply. He joins us now on the line. Uh, Jack, always a pleasure to have you on uh, the show. To be clear, of course, the presidency has denied the association, saying the pair has no relationship or even contact. But I imagine it's not something one would uh, hide if they wanted to score in this way. Well, look, you know, the, the relationship is there. He's a nephew by uh, President Ramaphosa's first wife. But there's another connection, according to News 24, and, and that's between uh, um, between Mr. Maimela and Ms. Bajani Chaoke, who's the uh, president's uh, chief advisor. Now, that's quite a serious connection. Apparently, they, they live very close to each other, and they're both uh, close to President Ramaphosa. So, of course, there's a, a connection. And, and uh, the big question, of course, is uh, whether any of this money made from our housing hospitals, uh, I think it was a rip-off prices, most likely. We don't even know if the products were actually delivered. Uh, whether any of this money uh, found its way to the ANC? Nomantum Gomo Ralehoko, the new MEC, says these 12 contracts were awarded uh, to Hangwani and his relative Aluwani Maumela, all coming in, interesting, at just under 500,000 rand. So that means none of them had to go through a competitive process like tendering. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's very suspicious because uh, I went through all of these uh, contracts and just under 500,000 rand, you know, 493, 498. It obviously means that they, they want to avoid the, the, the scrutiny of a tender. And these are very fishy companies as well. According to the same reply I got, uh, uh, at various times they were registered and not registered, tax compliant, not tax compliant. And, and, and according to the new NEC, uh, they weren't registered registered with the South African Health Products Regulatory Authority. Now, you can't sell uh, medical products uh, legally unless you registered with SAPRA. Uh, and apart from that, if you Google these companies, you find very little information about them. And, and you'd think that uh, if you're getting 380 million rand contracts from, from the Housing Health Department, you'd be a serious company with, with the employees and the profile on, on the internet. So it's all very suspicious. According to News 24, uh, seven out of the nine companies operate from one single address. So, you know, clearly it's, it's, it looks extremely fishy. I think they need to extend the, the SIU investigation, and this will require a, a proclamation by President Sir Ramaphosa himself. I mean, that's extraordinary. So what, they didn't have business premises. They were operating from a residential address. You say at times they may not have been tax compliant. They're selling medical supplies, but they don't have uh, uh, SAPRA approval for the sale of those medical products. How does Gauteng Health explain uh, such a, a mishap? How do they not see that? How do they not know that? Well, this is what's so pathetic, because in the official reply I got from the health ladies, she says, oh, we identified, uh, you know, um, it's, 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 you know processes that, that were deficient, and uh, we're going to tighten up the supply chain management process. Now, that's pathetic. I mean, what about blacklisting all these companies? What about uh, uh, disciplining the officials who allowed these transactions to go through? Uh, I, I find just a, a terribly weak response. I mean, they admit that they were deficient in 
allowing these payments to go through, well, why not take some, some real action? And, and this is the problem with the Gauteng Health Department. Uh, the reason they don't clear up the rot is that they don't get rid of the rotten officials and they, 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 they just allow this thing to continue. And I believe that there's political protection. Uh, that's why it's been allowed to continue for so long. And, and look who suffers from it all. You know, Tembisa Hospital, where uh, most of these payments were made Yeah, from, 356 and, million rand from that hospital alone. That's extraordinary. Yes, absolutely. In in three years, to all these fishy companies. Now we don't know if the, if the goods were even delivered. You know, remember the the skinny jeans and the expensive leather armchairs. Uh, I visited the hospital and they, and they weren't delivered. So uh, who knows if any of this other uh, stuff was delivered? But but you can just go to Tembisa Hospital. You'll see patients crowded, not getting proper uh, treatment. There's staff shortages. There's equipment breakdown. You know, all the usual problems you've come to associate with our heart in public hospitals. And yeah, this money is going to a politically connected person, uh, probably gross overcharging, and, and uh, you know, it looks like largely a, a waste of money. You know, this money is desperately needed to provide better treatment for patients in our hospitals. It's just an absolute scandal. And I'm going to be pursuing it with uh, holding the NEC to account for not yeah. uh, disciplining the officials. And I've also written to SAFRA to take action about these companies that weren't registered with them. Do we even know if what was ordered, what was paid for, however exorbitant the price was, if this was even delivered? Well, not at all. Uh, you know, as I said, I visited the hospital to find out if the skinny jeans and the expensive armchairs were there, and they weren't. So uh, I, I think that there needs to be a much wider probe. And uh, we need to know what, what prices were paid for these uh, goods. Uh, there's one example that's been given. There's, uh, it seems they paid 5,000 rand each for uh, kidney-shaped steel bowls, you know. Uh, <laughs> sounds outrageous. Uh, 500,000 rand paid for, uh, you know, 50 steel bowls. Now, this is ridiculous. If there's, if there's more of this type of transaction, I, I think there needs to be a criminal prosecution. Jack, how rotten is Gauteng Health? Well, it's just been scandal after scandal after scandal, and uh, there's been eight MECs in the last 10 years, and uh, nearly as many heads of departments and also chief financial officers. Currently, uh, the chief financial officer is suspended, as is the CEO of, of Tabisa Hospital. I, I think there's a scam in just about every Gauteng hospital. It's just uh, rotten from top to bottom, and, and uh, Babita Diakaran paid with her life. That shows you how, how bad this situation is that uh, people wanted her dead because of what she was disclosing. So, you know, we have a new premier, we have a new health NEC. Uh, I think they must prove themselves. And, but unfortunately, the reply that I got from the new health NEC that she's identified uh, deficiencies and they'll tighten up the process is just not good enough. You know, you must get rid of these rotten officials. Well, Jack, you got a reply from the MEC. We asked for an interview, and uh, she said she couldn't speak on this because it's still under investigation, and they don't have the report yet, she told us. Jack Bloom, appreciate your time. The DA's shadow MEC for health in Gauteng. Current events. Developing stories. Tough questions. Your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.